His endless love endures forever. Come, let us give thanks to the God of all gods, for His love endures forever. Let us give thanks to the Lord of lords, for His mercy endures forever. Let us enter His courts with praise and thanksgiving for his mercies endure forever. I trust today that as we are gathered that we will come with a mind to worship and that everything will be done decently and orderly all to the glory of God. May God continue to bless us. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our 65th Jamaica Mennonite Church Conference. It is a good thing to be in the house of the Lord. And I am excited because I have not seen so many of you in a while. And so, as the psalmist said, let us give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good hitherto has the Lord kept us and this morning we do have something to give God thanks for so we just want to lift our hands and give praise to Almighty God he is good there is no God like unto him we bless the name of Jesus this morning, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the one who woke you up this morning, the one who clothed you in his right mind, the one who rescued you from the pit of destruction. We give God praise this morning because he's worthy to be praised. There is no God like unto him. He alone is worthy. And we just want to give God thanks this morning indeed he has kept us hitherto as the Lord kept us and this morning we are giving thanks because he has brought us a mighty long way glory to Almighty God this morning let us pray father this morning we give you thanks mighty God we worship you this morning we thank you Almighty God for taking us this far we thank you, Lord, for bringing us here safely this morning from different parts of the island you have brought us. Oh, God, you have brought us from the cool hills of Temple Hall and Red Hills. You have brought us from St. Elizabeth. You have brought us, Almighty God, from Ocha Rios. You have brought us from Mandeville. You have brought us, Almighty God, from St. Catherine. You have brought us from sent and you have brought us mighty God from Portmore all over the globe mighty God maybe Montego Bay you have brought us from the United States this morning we are giving you thanks hitherto as you kept us almighty God and so Lord God we welcome the presence of the Holy Spirit with us this morning we shabak the name of Jesus Christ this morning we give God glory this morning in God. You deserve the glory. You deserve our praise. You deserve our adoration. So mighty God, as we gather in your presence this morning, we have come this morning, Lord God Almighty, to hear from you. We have come this morning, Almighty God, because we know your manifest presence is in the house. We have come this morning, God, to worship, to fellowship, Lord God, even with each other. We thank Thank you almighty God that we have made it we thank you almighty God for bringing us this far 65 years mighty God we are still here almighty God hallelujah to the King of Kings hallelujah to the Lord of Lords you have sustained us there are times almighty 
Almighty God, when it feel as if we were going under. But God, your everlasting arms were under us. And we are here this morning giving you praise this morning, Jesus. We could not have made it this far without you. And so, mighty God, we pray for this service this morning. We pray, God, that you will take charge of the music instruments this morning, mighty God. We pray that your hands will be upon them this morning, upon the musicians this morning. We pray for the praise team this morning, God, that as they come, Lord God, to lead us in worship, oh God Almighty, your presence will be felt in this place. Oh God, surround this place. We pray, Lord God, that the angels, oh God Almighty, will gather around this place this morning. Oh mighty God, this morning, we take authority over every plot and scheme of the enemy this morning. And we pray, Almighty God, that the Spirit of God will be lifted up in this place. We pray that you will cover the grounds this morning, Jesus. Mighty God, we pray this morning that everything will be done in your, in your way, Almighty God. Father God, cover every aspect of this service. The speaker, Almighty God, that those who will do the scripture reading, oh God Almighty, bless every person in this place this morning, Jesus, as we come to celebrate another year, almighty God. Father, we give you all the praise this morning. We give you all the glory because it all belongs to you. So, Spirit of the living God, we have your way this morning. Have your way this morning. Have your way this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, I'm going to invite... Our worship leader is Avia here. The team is here, the praise team to come, do the opening hymn, and then we follow in our program. Pastor Christopher Kennedy from the Joyland Mennonite will do another prayer, then the praise team, then the scripture reading, and then the welcome by Pastor William Broughton. Shall we praise the Lord? Shall we praise the Lord? Shall we praise the Lord like we're happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Stand with us as we open with we have a story to tell to the nations. It will be projected, but if you have a hymn book near you, it's 459, the hymn number 459. A story to tell to the nations that shall turn their hearts to the right. A story of truth and mercy, a story of peace and light, a story of peace and light. For the darkness shall turn to dawning and the dawning to noonday. song to be sung to the nations that shall lift their hearts to the Lord. A song that shall conquer evil and shatter the spear and the sword. And shatter the spear and the sword. For the darkness shall turn to
the Lord. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Welcome to our 65th annual conference. It's great to see you guys again. Amen. And we'll be praying this morning. You got the opening prayer, but we'll be praying again that God will, you know, as, a, as a movement, as a denomination, take us forward as we travel into the future and we engage rather different circumstances and times. So I think I'll ask you to remain seated as we pray. We bow our heads at this time. Almighty God, you're the God who sent Richard Lowen in the 1950s to the shores of Jamaica this Caribbean island. You sent him, God, with a vision. A man of faith who came just because, Lord, you told him to come. And, Lord, he came without backing and without support, but because he heard your voice. Somebody said, today, if you hear his voice, hard not your heart. And, God, we thank you, Lord, that when the moments came that he felt like he couldn't go on. Lord, the stories that he locked himself into a house on Whitehall Terrace and he called on the name of his God. Lord, as the sweat came down and his coat was soaked, Father, he came from that building and Simeon Walters echoed the, 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 the assurance to us through the ages who were not there, saying that the man of God said everything is all right. I don't have any money. I'm here with my wife. We have no support. Those who should have been behind us, we're not hearing from them, but we believe that God is on our side, and we're going to go forth with God on our side. We thank you, God, for that faith, oh God. And true to that faith, you have caused us as a movement as a denomination to be standing today. Oh God, we, we thank you, Lord, because we can hear you say 2,000 years ago, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Father, what could not prevail against us in 1950s and the 60s and the 70s up until the 2000s? God, they can't prevail today. And so God, we want to thank you, Lord, as David said, I will utter your praise in the great congregation. We honor you today, God. Father, it was not because of our brilliance, our imagination, our strategies, our education. It is because you have been faithful to us. You are a faithful God. Your word tells us the hills are round about Jerusalem. So the Lord is around them that fear him. God, we thank you that you have been around us, Lord, as we continue to fear you. 
And so, God, we thank you for what you have done before. Samuel stood before Israel with two pillars built and said, Hither to the Lord, up until this day, upon this moment, God has been faithful to us and God has led us. We want to thank you, God, for what you're doing today, what you'll continue to do. We ask for a special blessing on the leadership, God of every fraternity, upon every church. Father, we pray that we recognize, God, that you're giving us a renewed vision. Father, you're beginning to tell us that it's time to march. God, there are too many of us, God, that are not marching. Too many of us, God, that are not trying. Too many that don't, would have lost faith. But you're saying, Lord, that the hands that are hanging down, lift them up because God is about to do something greater. God is about to do something wonderful. Lord, you're about to do something sensational father this church that continues to stand is gonna make a difference we declare in the name of Jesus that the crime monster shall bow because it said every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord God the scamming is gonna bow in the name of Jesus child abuse God will be defeated in the name of Jesus. Father, God, we come against corruption in government, corruption in leadership. Lord, this church, God, that you have caused to endure, in the name of Jesus, we speak against everything today that is not of you. We reclaim this nation, oh God, out of the hands of those who have decided to spoil it. Because your word, God, tells us in the very anthem, eternal Father, bless the Jamaica Mennonite Church, God stands today unapologetically. Things must change. For you said, my word shall not go forth void, but it shall accomplish that which it was sent forth to do. So Father, we thank you today. We're going to march. Oh God, oh, we're going to take this nation with us. And so Father, for those who think that we are going to over be overcome by homosexuality, for those who think we're going to overcome, Lord, by abortion, we're going to be overcome by gender transformation, we declare in the name of Jesus that this rock of Jamaica will not fall because the Jamaica Mennonite Church, the people of God, has declared that you have given us this. We're going to occupy until you come because we have your authority. And so we give you God thanks today and praise for what you're going to do. We believe you, God. We believe you when it seems like nothing is going to happen. We believe you, Lord, when we're discouraged. We believe you, God, when we're prayed and prayed and prayed. And it seems like nothing is happening. But we believe you, God. And we're saying to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea. Because your word said it shall be done. And this country of Jamaica shall rise to give you praise shall rise to give you thanks, shall be a beacon in this world to which men can look to know about God. Jesus, we want to thank you because, Lord, you said, you said, in this world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. We want to thank you, oh God, for one shall chase. Oh God, disappointment upon disappointment at the 65th conference, we're hearing you saying, one shall chase a thousand. And two shall put 10,000 to flight. So, Father, we honor you, Lord, by believing today again that the kingdom of God shall conquer. And the Jamaica Mennonite Church stands to say that to all other churches and to Jamaica that we shall stand and we shall have the victory because, Jesus Christ, you are Lord. We give you honor and praise today. Hide us behind the cross. And we pray that all the honor and glory be, will be to you, O oh God. And as we leave this place today, may we go marching God, knowing that we are not fighting for victory. We are fighting unto victory. Because we believe that it is your word that has the final say. In Jesus' name, we give you thanks and honor and praise. And everybody lift your hand and say, Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.
to be honored, worthy to be praised, worthy to be glorified. We know that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. So this morning as we sing unto the King of Kings and unto the Lord of Lords, I want you to reflect on what God has done for you. He has been so good to us.
choosing this year to be holy, set apart for our master. Glory be to God. We're ready to do your will, O oh Lord. Praise the Lord. So if you did, if you did tired before, and if you're hungry, no bother mind with that. Now is the time you're gonna shake it off. Amen. Amen. So we want to find some space. We want to cause when you start clapping up, we don't want you to lick down the body.
Good morning, everyone. Our scripture reading comes to us from Ephesians chapter 2, reading from verse 14 through to the end. That's Ephesians chapter 2, reading from verse 14. Ephesians chapter 2, reading from verse 14. And it says, for he is. Even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. Verse 17, this is our theme verse. And came and preached peace 
to you which were afar off and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together grow it unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye are also built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, praise team. Thank you. It was a wonderful time just praising the Lord. And we continue to praise the Lord. Thank you, Deaconess Marsha Norman. At this time, we'll have our welcome, our official welcome from the JMC president, Pastor Liston Aiken, followed by the fraternal greetings from the Virginia Mennonite Missions, then the commissioning of council and pastors, and then Pastor Lloyd Moore will lead us in the prayer for the council and pastors. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Don't tell me that um, after that. Praise our worship, you're tired already, you know. Because it's a long day. We need to praise our worship, you're supposed to feel refreshed. And so thank you very much, praise team, for that wonderful time of praise. Amen. 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 Really, really blessed. It is uh, a pleasure for me to extend a warm welcome to one and all this morning. We thank God that he has invited us to be in his presence. The Lord invited us here, and we have accepted the invitation, and we want to thank God for inviting us here. Amen. God gave us all this invitation, and we said, yes, Lord. So I want to thank God that he invited us into his presence. The congregations that may be here, should be here um, at this time, we just ask you to quickly stand, wave your hands. Um, congregation led by Pastor uh, Christopher Kennedy and wife, Sister Kennedy, Abrams Mennonite, are you here with us? Abrams. <laughs> Led by Pastor and Sister Sinclair, Alpine Mennonite Church. Alpine. <laughs> Led by Pastor and Sister Holland, a Bethel Mennonite Church. And my pastor and Sister Smith, Calvary Benedict Church. <laughs> Led by Pastor Aston Jarrett, who sends his apology. He's off on a well-needed, well-deserved break. Um, it's Faith Benedict Church. And to say that in his absence, Deaconess Natalie Carr has been holding the fort for us. Jolens Mennonite, led by Pastor and Sister Kennedy. Jolens. Yeah. 
good tidings led by um, Pastor and Sister Akin, Assistant Pastor Lloyd Moore and Sister Janet Moore. Good tidings. Ultraius led by Pastor and Sister Heinz. Ultraius. Rich uh, Mennonite um, Pastor Kennedy is uh, the team leader there at Rich. Rich, any members from Rich here today? And there are a number of persons in the team who um, go there to minister, including Brother Colin Robertson, and um, there's another gentleman, uh, Upton Williams who also goes uh, there to minister at Ridge and pa past, eh? Brother? Oh, Hepburn Young and Hepburn Young, yes. And Pastor Broughton, who um, minister there up until uh, December. We want to welcome um, from Unity, Unity Mennonite, Unity, could you stand please? A couple of people from Unity and Sister Valerie, Sister Valerie McCarthy holds the fort out there. We have a team, but Sister Valerie who is standing there um, holds the fort for us. Waterloo Mennonite Church, Pastor and Sister Sinclair. Waterloo, could you stand please? Waterloo. Uh, we are not certain we have not had them here for a few years, but uh, any members or representatives from South Hill is here? Not, not now. But we do have um, Pastor Damon Hines who oversees that work, so we want to pray him up as he continues to oversee that work. Uh, Temple Hall Mennonite Church, led by Pastor. And Sister Broughton, welcome to the hall. Thank you very much for coming. Did I leave out any congregation? Did I? Did I leave out any congregation? Pastors, you must tell me, you know. <laughs> okay, we want to welcome from Virginia Mennonite Mission, um, Brother Jason Showalter. <laughs> welcome, welcome. And we'll hear greetings from him in a few moments. Okay. <laughs> um, I want to also welcome visitors. Uh, you're not necessarily a Mennonite, but you're here. Visiting with us, we want to welcome you. Any visitors with us today? Any visitors with us? Yes, we have one visitor. Welcome, welcome. Another visitor, visitor there. And all visitors, all persons online, visitors online, we want to welcome you. I know I saw my good friend uh, of high school days just walk in. Um, but before I do that, I'd like to extend a special welcome to members of the Council of Management. And I, I'd like you to put your hands together for the members of the Council of Management. Um, Vice President Damien Hines from Ultraviers, our Secretary Deaconess Natalie Carr, Treasurer uh, Sister Eva McDonald. Um, Nurture Director, Pastor Christopher Kennedy, Education and Training Director, Sister Regina Taylor, our Missions Director, Evangelist Marvin Davis, and our New Properties Director, I'm not seeing him, uh, Brother Kirk Matthews from Waterloo. Is Brother Kirk here? 
No, we haven't, I haven't seen him. So, and we will recognize our outgoing properties director, Deacon Leighton Baker. Um, Leighton, just wave for me, please. Deacon Leighton Baker is our outgoing uh, properties director. So we want to welcome one and all, and we want to say our Reverend Dr. Steve, Stevenson Samuels. Welcome, my brother. Welcome, 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 welcome. A hearty welcome from the Mennonite Church where you started your preaching. <laughs> A hearty welcome, my brother, and it's good to see you. Um, he made the sacrifice to run away from his congregation where he has a special program. There's a choir at his church this morning from the United States. And so he as a host pastor, um, you know, we would normally try to ensure that we're there, but he took the time to, um, to leave and to share with us his second family, a church family. And we want to say to the, the, we hope you still have a job when you go back. <laughs> we want to say thank you very much, um, Pastor, for, for coming. I also see our past president, Sister Linda Campbell. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And we did mention earlier, um, the, the, the program says, welcome by the president. And um, one year ago, Pastor William Broughton uh, gave up the presidency. <laughs> and so we want to welcome you, especially my brother, and, and say thanks for holding the fort. And some of you don't know, but we, uh, Pastor Broughton and I go far back. He, he was the first um, kind of uh, leader, my co-leader in pastoral work. When this, when at a conference, I was sent to the first pastoral work. They called me a youth pastor, but there was no other pastor there. So I did, don't know what youth pastor really mean. So they called me a youth pastor probably because I was young. And so they sent me to Temple Hall, whose pastor was at step back at the time, and Pastor Broughton, whose father was a deacon at the time, knew all the ropes, and he taught me the terrain, literally taught me the terrain. So I had to learn the hills of Temple Hall and the valleys of Temple Hall, and he was really a tremendous help and uh, near to 40 years after, don't tell nobody so, so, say so long, nearly 40 years after we remained together in ministry. A wonderful, thank you very much, Pastor Brown. All right, Sister Jackie, what else am I supposed to do? On the fraternal greetings first. So, um, the Trinidad Mennonite Church, or the Mennonite Church of Trinidad and Tobago, send their greetings to us. They were unable to make it. They are having their own monetary and other challenges, but they do send their love and they do send their greetings. And um, although this is not fraternal, Pastor Jared sends his greetings. So we want to um, resend our greetings to Trinidad and Tobago Mennonite Church. So right now we're going to welcome Brother Jason Showalter to come and to give us greetings from VMM. And sisters, it is a joy to be with you again in person after a number of years of separation. I was last with you three years ago, one week before everything closed. 
and we were no longer able to leave our homes for a period of time. It's been some difficult years, but I'm glad to be with you here this morning. I bring greetings from Virginia Mennonite Missions and the group of churches, Virginia Mennonite Conference, who more than 100 years ago gave the commission to, to Virginia Mennonite Missions to send out people to new places. First of all, to our Jerusalem, which was West Virginia and Tennessee and North Carolina in church planting, and then to places outside of the, the United States. And it's part of my great joy to be able to visit the church around the world. One of the gifts we have when we gather with the body of Christ is to remember who we are. We're not just here in this place today, but as we gather in the name of Jesus through His Spirit, we gather with people of every language and nation and tribe around the world. We need to remember that this morning together. As you gather in worship, you're gathering through the Spirit of Jesus with brothers and sisters in Thailand this morning who are seated on the floor, opening the Word of God, praying and worshiping together. You're gathering with small groups of brothers and sisters in places like North Africa, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, Bangladesh, who cannot gather in public like you are today with your doors wide open, worshiping the Lord with this marvelous praise that we've had. They're gathering in secret this morning because they have to. We gather with them through the living presence of Jesus this morning. And I want, I want us to remember that it was, it's been such a joy to gather with the Council of Management, with your delegates yesterday, and to hear stories of God's faithfulness to you, the ways that you are sharing the good news with your neighbors. You have the vision of sharing that throughout the, the Caribbean, but you also have a vision to go beyond. And th this morning, one-third of the world does not live in a place where they will meet a brother or sister a follower of Jesus who can share the gospel with them. They live far, hundreds of miles from the nearest Christian. And Jesus has given us the mandate to go. And so it's a joy to gather with you with that memory of the mandate that we receive from Jesus to gather and worship as his body and then to go with the good news. I want to share just a couple verses from Hebrews that connects with your theme verse. Jesus has torn down the dividing wall of separation. And in Hebrews 6, verse 18, it says that God did this through Christ so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. We have this hope an anchor for the soul, firm and secure, to enter the inner sanctuary behind the curtain. Jesus has torn it down where our forerunner, Jesus, has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. We've gone through some winds and storms in the last years, brothers and sisters, but we have an anchor for our soul, firm and secure. And I leave you with that hope today. Thank you for the opportunity to greet you this morning. Hallelujah. We have an anchor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And even as we make disciples, we can rest assured that we have an anchor. And you know, you can say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because we are free. We are not hiding to worship like those in other parts of the world. So we can shout hallelujah because we have an anchor. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you so much, Pastor Liston, for the welcome. And Brother Show Walter, thank you for blessing us this morning with your greetings. You know, many persons or a few persons have left our shores since the last conference year. I am not able to say who from all the different congregation, 
But I want us to take a moment of silence this morning as we remember, as you remember who might have left your shore from your congregation. But we want to also, everybody that is um, connected to the Jamaica Mennonite Church, remember Pastor Douglas Sr. Because he was very, very involved in the Jamaica Mennonite Church for years. He has played in many, acted in many, served in many different positions on the Council of Management with his wisdom. And so we want to remember him. We want to remember, I want you also to remember those from your congregation. We want to remember Sister Lydia Jarrett this morning, Pastor Aston Jarrett's wife. A she was a real stalwart in the Jamaica Mennonite Church, and especially at Faith. And I can testify to that because when I was youth president, after the food coming back, via Sister Lydia Jarrett for youth camp. This morning, we want to remember and we want to have a moment of silence also for Pastor Richard Tyson's wife. There are many others, you know, but, you know, we all just remember these persons because of the connection and the involvement. And so I am saying to every member of a congregation connected to JMC this morning where you have lost any person from your congregation I'm still saying condolences to the church family and we will all take a moment of silence in remembering every single one of them I'm going to invite the congregation to stand Ushers, make sure there should be no one walking up and down at this time. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Ushers, please take note of this. If there's any member, anyone sitting down and there's space beside you, can you just raise your hands so the ushers can know? There is this seat at the front is vacant. Persons down there waving hands, that means there are seats there. Amen. Thank you. Now our president, Pastor Liston, is coming again to do the commissioning of the council and the pastors. And Pastor Lloyd Moore will do the prayer for the council and pastors. And then Pastor Damian Hines, our vice president, will lead us into a time of holy communion. I invite the members of the council to just come and stand. All the members of the council. I also wish to invite all the pastors along with their wives to come and s stand right here and um, face the congregation. Or if the council could just step a little to this side so that they can find space up here. 
Dinge, can we find space? Terminal? You're not, you're not sure. All right, let's see. Yeah, man, come. You good enough? You can All right. Yeah, man. Try not to drop off here. Yes, we hold easily. Um, no, man, we want to see your faces right here. <laughs> Okay. You hold easily, right? <laughs> Brothers and sisters, we already introduced in my welcome the members of the council. They look pretty young. So they are in it for the long haul. Um, I did not think of the day when I would say, you know, like at college, that I'm a senior, I'm a senior man among them. So we want to put our hands together for this young council. And we want to also put our hands together for our pastors and their wives. We're gathered together in the presence of God to dedicate those who have been chosen for special service in this church. As they render their service in their different offices they will need your prayers and your support we join them now as they dedicate themselves so that they may discharge your calling with faithfulness to the glory of god we're reminded as each has received a gift employ it for one another as good stewards of God's manifold grace. Whoever speaks as one who utters the oracles of God, whoever renders service as one who renders it by the strength which God supplies in order that everything, in everything, God may be glorified through Christ Jesus. I charge you, officers and pastors, Whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. Give thanks to God the Father through him. Attend to the public reading of the scripture, to preaching and teaching. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by God, a worker, who has no need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Pray at all times, pray in the spirit, with all prayer and supplication. I appeal to you, officers and pastors, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual act of worship. I remind you of the word of the Lord. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide. Set apart, we beseech you, O Lord. Let us pray. Set apart, we beseech, O Lord, these your servants to the work whereunto you have called them. Endue them with wisdom and power. Grant unto them the qualities of good leadership so that they may lead your people aright. Fill them with your spirit 
and grant them your grace that they may be true and faithful. Make them good examples to the flock. Lord, cover them, surround them, give them compassionate hearts. We pray through Christ our Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, head of the church, and in the name of the fellowship of God's people, we now set you apart again for the various offices and responsibilities. The Lord of all grace, who has called you into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, make you perfect, establish you, strengthen you, and settle you to him be glory and power forever and ever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift up his grace, his countenance on you, and give you peace. Amen. Pastor the Lord. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity of calling you Father, Abba, Father. And so, Heavenly Father, we present all the members of the Council of Management and all our pastors and their wives to you today. Lord, you have given the Council of Management an awesome responsibility, Lord, to lead your church. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will endue them with power from on high. Lord, that they may lead your people effectively and vigorously. Lord, we pray that in times of difficulties and discouragement, Lord, that you will renew them and refresh them, Lord, so that they will complete the work you have called them to do. Father, we present all our pastors and their wives to you in a very special way. We pray, Lord, that they congregation they serve will be supportive and Lord will be prayerful will pray for them God we bless you and praise you and worship you and honor you and give you thanks for their willingness to serve in your kingdom and Lord, we thank you that they do not serve you in vain, but each person will receive a reward for their faithful service in the kingdom. Lord, again, we present the Council of Management and all our pastors and their spouses into your mighty hands. In the name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Thank you very much. You will be seated. There's a, there are two more group, groups that not in your program that we're going to pray for. Yesterday, there, I sensed there was a move of God on our hearts and like in no other conference that I had experienced, the Holy Spirit really moved on people's heart to say here I am Lord I will serve and so at some point in the deliberations yesterday there was an outpouring of yes to the Lord and I really want to give God thanks for that movement of the Holy Spirit on hearts where so many persons have said I am available, I'm available, I will work. And that is a movement of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You don't understand that that's a great move of the Holy Spirit 
when you hear a person saying, yes, I will, yes, I will. And so for the various auxiliary um, arms of the church, the women, and for the first time, we had a set of men who said, we are going to form the Jamaica Mennonite Church Men's Ministry. And that started yesterday. We say amen. Come on, we say amen. Amen. And so I like to, uh, the children's ministry, which had a two-year hiatus. There were persons who said, I am going to work with the children again. And person said, I will work with young adults. Um, I will work with youth. I, what other area? Young adults, youth, men, and children and people eat uh, poverty. So persons just heard the voice of the Lord and without being prompted, they just said yes. And that's a great move of the Holy Spirit among us. I'd like to invite those persons who said yes to the Lord yesterday in as you committed. I'm going to invite you to come. All those persons who said yes. Yesterday, whether it be for youth, young adults, uh, women, on the women's committee, young adults, men, I'm going to invite you to come. And, um, and we're going to pray you up. Some of you don't understand when that this, power, this is a powerful move of God on hearts. And all this happened yesterday in our sessions as we talked and we deliberated. Persons just said, I'm available. I'm available. This is a great working of, of, of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to invite my friend, Brother Steve, Come, Dr. Samuels, to just pray up, pray up these brothers and sisters as they have, they don't know the, the, the journey, but guess what happened? God knows. God knows. Praise God. This is a great moment in the life of this church, and I think that we ought to rejoice when we are entering into a new season. My God. And therefore, in solidarity with this prayer, I'm going to ask you to stand as we commit these men and women to the grace of God. Let us pray. O oh God, Lord of all, we thank you that this church is not ours. It belongs to you. You are the head of this church. You are in charge of this church. And so, Lord, you who are the head, you said that the gates of hell can never prevail against this church. Because this church is built upon the rock. A rock that is solid. A rock that is secure. A rock that is permanent. And so, Lord, it is with that assurance that we stand in this time to give you thanks for all of these men and women that you have spoken to. Lord, when we see them coming up here, we know that your spirit is still active in your church. And we thank you and we bless you. We thank you, Lord, that there are men and women that are still hearing your voice and still saying, I am available. I am willing. Use me, Lord. And so we thank you, God, for these that have said just that as your spirit, God, activated their spirits, Lord God. And as they looked, oh, Father, not just on you, but as they looked on your church and as they looked on the fields, Lord, ready for harvest, they said, I 
I am available. And now, Lord, as they stand before this great national body, I ask that you will come amongst us and anoint every one of them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Unctionize them, Almighty God. And Lord, may a new awakening begin in the Mennonite church in this nation through their work. Lord God, cause us now to be at this significant milestone where a new thing is about to happen. Break through, oh God, in this church, through the lives and the ministry of these men and women. And we pray, oh God, that a mighty revival will begin in the Mennonite church in Jamaica because of their work, because of their ministry, because of their availability. In the name of Jesus, we thank you now, God, because you're doing a work already. You started already. Hallelujah. Even before this conference you were preparing hearts you were breaking hearts you were mending hearts you were molding men and women and now God we are going forward to conquer we are going forward oh God to accomplish in the name of Jesus we thank you and we bless you Amen bless the Lord bless you thank you thank you thank you Hallelujah. Come on, give some give God a praise. Come on, give God a praise. Truly the presence of the Lord is in this place. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is time for our holy communion and I'm going to be inviting the following pastors, Pastor Christopher Kennedy, Pastor Donovan Smith, Pastor Dylan Sinclair and Pastor Vince Holland to join us. At the front, we're also inviting our head usher, Deacon Leighton Baker, who will be providing instructions for us. Praise the Lord. God is good. And all the time, God is indeed a good God. And we give him the glory. Amen, somebody? Amen. Praise the Lord. I'll read a portion of scripture from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Verse 23 to 26. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 from verse 23 to 26. The Apostle Paul was writing to the church in Corinth. And this is what he says. For I receive from the Lord what I also pass unto you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he has given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. My brothers and sisters, we are invited to come to the table. Not because we must, but because we may. Not because we are strong, but because we are weak. Jesus has shed his blood for our sins. His body was broken for our sins. And that is the reason we can stand assured this morning that there is power in the name of Jesus. And whatever we ask him, he shall grant to us. And so instruct our pastors who will be serving you as you will be following the instruction of our head deacon and our ushers as you come to be served your communion this morning. And while you're coming, come with a grateful heart. Come with a mindset that God, whatever you're going through, nothing is impossible with the Lord. All things 
are possible. And while they're serving, I'm going to invite the praise and worship team to lead us at this time. Search me, O Lord, and know my heart today. Try me, O Savior. Number 243, the blood that Jesus shed for me. The blood, the blood that Jesus shed for me.
blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose it if you know that it reaches to the highest mountain sing that with us this morning for it reaches Just raise your hand so our pastors can come to you and serve you.
blessings of the Lord and the cup and on the bread. Hallelujah. Almighty God, we thank you that your blood will never lose its power. We thank you, God, that it still flows from Calvary. We thank you that there is healing, deliverance, miracle, and breakthrough in your blood. We thank you, God, that your body was broken for our sins. And God, that's the reason we can cry, Abba, Father, and we can come to the throne of grace. And so, Lord, we pray your blessings on the cup. And, Lord, we pray your blessing on the bread, a representation of your body and your blood that was shed for us on Calvary's cross. We pray that, God, you'll continue to minister to your people even now. Do something supernatural, God, in the lives of your people. And God, we place them in your hands and we tell you thanks for all that you do and what you're going to do even now. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we say amen and amen. And so I invite you at this time to eat with me in this communion. And so on the night our Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it and he said, eat. Let us now eat together in remembrance of Jesus. night he took the cup and he gave thanks and I want us to take a moment while you're holding the cup in your hand that the blood of Jesus still flows and he said this is a new covenant of my blood let us drink together in remembrance of Jesus Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that we have been refreshed. We have been restored. And we have been renewed. And we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. The blood prevails, the blood of the risen Lamb, power to save, just as in olden days the blood prevails, no matter what others say. Thank God, thank God. 
Jesus. Wonder working power in the blood of Jesus. The blood flows from the highest mountain to the lowest valley. That means it doesn't matter what state you are in today, the blood can reach you. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm having a blessed time. I don't know about anybody else. What time is it though? What time is it? It's offering time. It is offering time. It is time to give back to Almighty God. He has been just blessing us with his presence all morning. So I don't even have to tell you to get in your pocket and take out something big. It's offering time. And uh, I'm going to ask Deacon Leighton Baker to just give us some instructions. But before, I'm going to invite uh, Pastor Donovan Smith uh, just to come and to bless the offering. And then Deacon Baker will give us further instruction. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Praise God. It is time to give to the Lord. Well, you know something? Some of us give already. Because when the basket was coming around, it was to collect the empties. So I put my offering in it. So I have to give again. So, <laughs> so those of you who give already, you need to give his offering time now. Amen? <laughs> so, I think I have to give again. Amen? Let us bow our heads at this moment. God is good. And all the time, truly is good. Father, we thank you even now. We glorify your name. Mighty God, you are the giver of everything. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The world and everything in it belongs to you, Lord. And mighty God, we come this moment. Lord, as we give back, not, only, not, not as we give back, but Lord, as we send, Lord God, to you, because it belongs to you, Lord. Father, we pray even now that, God, you will bless the hearts of your people right now. Lord God, help us that, Lord, we will give, mighty God, to the glory and the honor of you, dear Father God. We pray, Lord God, even now, Lord, that, Father, my God, you will bless those who give. Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, as we sow 
Heavenly Father, that Lord, you will give us a return. Lord, bless this offering and sanctify it, that it will, Lord God, go to the furtherance of your work here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Um, all right. The communion was just a rehearsal, right? Now, we're going to collect the tithes and offering section by section, meaning we have four sections in the congregation. One here, there's a passage behind here. Another section, likewise on this, right? So I'm going to ask two ushers with basket. You can stand here. Usher, stand here. Likewise, in the passage. And then you're going to follow the usher's instructions, right? The, the usher's in the passage. You're going to Ushers in the back, can you go in the center of the sister part? Go on this in the center of the passage. Likewise, Sister Stephanie, go in the center of the passage. All right, so congregation, you're going to follow the ushers' instructions. When the time comes, follow the instructions. You're going to come down the passage, drop your offering, and go back to your seat. All right? Okay, so that's it, song leaders. We're going to do the hymn number 544, Now Thank We All Our God. That is if you have a hymnal there to hear. Now thank we all our God With hearts and hands and voice We're going to do verse 3 again.
Lord. I want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you ever thought of me. I want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you ever thought of me. Oh, many are the blessings that you give unto me. Blessings overflowing like a mighty sea. Lord, I want to thank you for your love to me. Oh, yes, sir. Lord, I wanna thank you for your love to me. Yeah, I wanna thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I wanna thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That you ever thought of many are the blessings, many are the blessings that you give unto me. Blessings are flowing like a mighty sea. Lord, I wanna thank you. For your love to me, yeah, I want to thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, I want to thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, that you ever thought of me. Hallelujah. This time, Pastor Liston Aiken is going to come to introduce our speaker for the day. And after that, the Ocherius Mennonite Church will minister to us. And then Pastor Dylan Sinclair will pray for the speaker. And the next voice you will hear is from Dr. Stevenson Samuels, who is coming with the best wine. Thank you very much, Evangelist Davis. Um, our speaker this afternoon, our main speaker, uh, has spoken to us before at a, one of our conferences many years ago. He is Reverend Dr. Stevenson Samuels. We go back high school years, and probably before that, because we were both in this community, and he was off Manison Road, his whole family, Glen Drive, and I was just down this side. He is the chairman of the Kingston Keswick Con Council and a member of the National Prayer Breakfast Committee. He is also, also a member of the National Executive of the New Testament Church of God and he's a coordinating chaplain at the University of the West Indies and chaplain of the University of Technology. He's a senior pastor at Walton Park, New Testament Church of God, a brother who used to sing, uh, Bert Wright, and... Um, excited about music and about um, the gospel and about all things Christian. He is a Christian and he loves the things of God. So we want to say to him today, thanks for accepting this invitation. We really are grateful. Um, we call it a privilege to have you in our midst. So we put our hands together for him and uh, we look forward to hear from you and do send greetings to your church and to your family. God bless you.
Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody say Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody hallelujah. say Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout another Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mention. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you blessed this morning? Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. God is good. Come on, people of God. God is good. Come on, stand to your feet and wave hallelujah to God this morning. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. He is worthy. Hallelujah. I want to hear the worshipers in the house. Come on, people of God. Worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. He's worthy to be praised. Praise God. within your presence I speak Jesus oh yeah I just want to speak the name of Jesus till every dark addiction starts to break declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadow. Burn like the fire. Your name, your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadow. Burn like a fire. And I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over fear and all anxiety. To every soul held captive by depression, I speak Jesus. Oh, 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 oh. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadow. Burn like a fire. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadow. Burn like a fire. Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak in my holy name, Jesus, your name is power, your name is healing, your name is love. Shadows burn like a fire. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through 
the shadow burn like a fire. Shout Jesus on the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I see the holy name, Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is light. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadow, burn like a fire. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is light. Shadow burn like a fire. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. and every mind cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus oh your name is power your name is healing your name is life Let me hear you give the Lord a praise in the house. Come on, 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 come on. Let me hear you give the Lord a praise in the house. Glory be to Almighty God. We magnify your name. We say in you we live, we move, and we have our entire being. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. And so we give you the highest praise. We say, indeed, you are our Father. And we look to you even now, because this is your house, and you are here, mighty God, with us. And so we acknowledge your presence. Could you all stand with me for this moment? Glory be to Almighty God, awesome God. We bow in your presence, awesome God. We give you all the honor, awesome God. We give you all the praise because indeed, you are truly amazing. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory be to Almighty God. Glory be to Almighty God. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Mighty God, we look to you at this very moment. We thank you for the way you have been leading us, mighty God. And even now, mighty God, in Matthew 4.4, 4, your word said that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of your mouth. This morning is not my word. It's not Dr. Samuel's word, 
but it is your word. And your word, mighty God, in Hebrews 4 verse 12 says, the word of God is quick. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is sharp. And this morning we look to you for a word. A word that is powerful, a word that is quick, a word that is sharp, a word that is able to discern our very thought, our very intent. Even this morning, mighty God, we look to you. We present your manservant at this moment. Mighty God, we thank you for his preparation. But even now, mighty God, I pray that your Holy Spirit will lead his presentation. We pray for a manifestation, mighty God, in this place. It's our 65th annual assembly. But I pray, God, that it will be one that we'll never forget. Because we will experience, come on, people of God, that which is spectacular. That which we have never experienced before. Because when you show up, mighty God, you show off. And you show up in ways that only you alone can. And so we humble ourselves in your presence. I pray, mighty God, that you will give a double portion of your anointing upon your manservant. That as he speak, he will speak with power. Come on, people of God. He will speak with authority in the name of Jesus. And I present your people this morning. I pray that their hearts, mighty God, will be ready for the word. Like the soil that need to be prepared to receive the seed. We pray, God, that your word, we know, we know that your word will not return to you void. So this morning we pray that your word will take root in the hearts of your people and that it will produce much fruit. Father, we give you all the glory and we give you all the praise and we tell you thanks even now in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. God. It is indeed my pleasure to be here today to be the preacher for, is it the 65th? The 65th conference, is that what we say? Annual General Conference of the Mennonite Church. I am delighted. I thank you for selecting me. <laughs> I am really checking. Yes, I'm very delighted to be uh, selected and very humbled to be selected to be the preacher this morning. So let me greet all the ministers, all the pastors that are here. I greet you in the name of the Lord. I also want to greet the, uh, the council, the national council, uh, in the name of the Lord. It's so good to see men and women standing up to provide leadership at the national level. I want to also uh, recognize our representative from Virginia that is here, that is obviously very aware of the history of this, of this. Uh, great work in Jamaica and I want to indeed greet all the delegates that are gathered here together to participate in this very significant milestone conference of the Mennonite Church praise God it's good to see you praise God and just good to be in the atmosphere of worship good singing great music you know it's just sweet. I am happy to be here. Yeah. So I thank you for the invitation. And now let me just give one little testimony that I'm sure uh, Pastor uh, Aiken knows that I would have given. Because this church means a lot to me. The first thing is I grew up in this area, this immediate area. Uh, so I'm very familiar with 
this congregation. And I used to go to the school next door. So I passed here every day, twice a day. So I know this church like my hand middle. <laughs> and then, you know, when I went to school, uh, I had some friends who were a part of this congregation. And I had many brothers and sisters. And a lot of my brothers and sisters had friends here too. So we, we had a strong connection with this local with this local congregation. And that was from primary school going into high school because the same thing happened in high school. You know, in fact, one of your members was my, was my classmate. And um, I knew her pretty well. And, uh, we, you know, we had a pretty good relationship there. And so, you know, I mean, this church has just meant so much to me. And when I became a solid Christian... Uh, you know, there were some solid Christians from here also. So they were not just my friends. We were in fellowship. We were in fellowship together. It, it, it's just amazing. So being here, it, it makes, you wouldn't like to know how I feel just being here. Okay? <laughs> and let me tell you another crazy part of the testimony. Because when, when I was a teenager, I... I I almost lost my way, not spiritually now, but just, I became a, like a fanatic for Jesus. Like, I was crazy. I did crazy stuff, you know, really for the Lord, though, <laughs> you know. And then, and, and then this church figured it out. This church figured out that I was, I meant well. Yeah. And, and, and so, you know, today... Um, all of the stuff, you know, I work with the universities, I work with my denomination, I work with various denominations, but I'm telling you, it started right here. Yeah. This is, this is, this church, this church is the first church that I preached in ever, ever, ever. This is the first church I have ever preached in, in my life, okay? And I was a teenager. The church take me up and put me around your pulpit as a teenager. When I was in high school, I was a high schooler. And you, it's the same podium, my God. <laughs> oh, boy. So you see, when I come back here, my heart. Yeah, my heart. And then, you know, I know I've preached at your, at your uh, conference already. But another thing that touched me, and now this is me just doing something back, because when I, when I get turned big man now and had children and they were going to the school at Meadowbrook Prep, there was a sister. I don't even know if she's still alive. But she used to work there. Yeah, yeah. Last year. Yeah. And she treated my children so well. You know, may the Lord. Oh boy. And then and then I remember when she came to me and said, Boy, we are building the building. That time you know that already. Cause me used to live around here, so you know. And then and then she said, Well, you know, you have to give an offering for the building of the so my money in at this. My money in a this. Me don't know is which tile me buy or so, but me buy something, man. Something. Me buy something. When you can't get me outside of this place. Yeah. Can't. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh Lord. I am back here. And so it's sweet me. I feel good. Yes, the minute you ask me, I, I told you, you know, they are, the, the choir that is from, from Cleveland, it's, it's 50 persons in the choir from abroad. Uh, you know, so I'm not really supposed to leave my church right now. But, I mean, the Mennonite church invite me to come to preach. Me God left them. I mean, hope so nobody now watch the stream right now. <laughs> oh my God. 
much. I am here. It's good to be here. You know, I want to read a passage of scripture for you. It comes from Ephesians chapter 2. And I want to read just a few verses there. Um, yes. I want to read from verse 14 to verse 18. From verse 14 to verse 18. That's Ephesians chapter 2. Now, Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verse 17, is the verse that you have chosen to be the central verse that you are focusing on in this conference. And so I decided that, well, I've got to read it. And when I read it, from the minute you want to tell me Ephesians, you know, I said, Lord of mercy, I want a hard book that. <laughs> I want an easy book where I can just, you know, you know. And then when I read the text, I started to get a little tender because I said, no, sir. The text here kind of, and then pastor now give me one, one, one complicated topic. And, and then and he gave me the mission statement. Boy, but the more I looked at it, is the more I got excited. I'm telling you, the more I got excited. So I want to share some thoughts with you from this, from this text. Listen to Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 14. It says, for he himself is our peace. Who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier. The dividing wall of hostility. By abolishing in his flesh the law with its commandments and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new man out of the two. Thus making peace. <laughs> and in his body one... Uh, uh, but, and he, in this one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit. May the Lord add his richest blessings to the reading of his word. You are guided. You are guided. This conference and this entire movement in Jamaica is guided by a new vision statement, I gather. And I like it. I like it. In fact, there are very few local churches, local movements that would have come up with a vision like this. A vision statement. It says, we are a disciple-making church. Beautiful. Dedicated to bringing Christ's peace and love, healing and hope to peoples of the Caribbean and beyond. Actually, I have never read a mission statement of, or a vision statement of any church in Jamaica that mentions Caribbean in it. I have never. Maybe there are. I'm not saying there aren't. But I'm telling you, it is the first I am seeing the word Caribbean in any vision statement of any church in Jamaica. You are amazing. You are amazing. I'm telling you. And then, and then, there are very few churches in, the world, in Jamaica today that are talking about some kind of vision statement that is missional. Everything we are talking about now is about me, myself, and I. Our mission is to empower the believers, to fill the saints with the Holy Spirit. To become prosperous in this time. For brethren to know their purpose. Everything is centered around me. Or maybe around the congregation. To become a congregation that is serving Christ. A congregation. Everything. But your mission, vision statement is focused on the outside. You are disciple making so that you can bring peace and love and hope and healing 
Not to yourself. To the world. To the Caribbean. I almost, I am almost even wondering if I should believe you. I don't know how you could come up with this. In a world that is focused inwardly. You are looking outward. That is absolutely amazing. And I congratulate you. So then, for emphasis, I read verse 17. Because you have chosen the right verse. It is absolutely appropriate for what we are dealing with today and beyond. It says, he came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. <laughs> oh, Lord. You know, as I look at this text today, the he we are talking about is Jesus Christ. Not us. Once again, you are putting Jesus in the center. Which is again, very, very rare. And you are saying, by looking at this verse, that he, Jesus, was proactive. You are saying that he, Jesus, was preaching. That he, Jesus, was peace-giving. That he, Jesus, was progressive and he was propagating and so those are the thoughts that i want to leave with you today as we look at this text and i hope that you will stay with me you're going to stay with me you better stay with me today <laughs> yes he was proactive let me hear you say proactive yes he was proactive when i look at the text when I look at the text, the first thing I see is those two words at the beginning. He came. He came. And for me, that just stirred up my, it stirred up my emotions. It stirred up my spirit. I got excited because, because he, he came. He came for me implies that Jesus was proactive. It means that he reached out instead of passively retreated into hiding or remaining passive, leaving the task of redemption and the search for salvation on humanity. He never did that. He was proactive. Instead of waiting, instead of retreating, instead of going back, he came forward and he reached out to man so that man could be redeemed. He was proactive. He came therefore and represented the action of God. Oh, many gods around the world, you have to go to them. Oh, yes, you have to go to Mohammed. Oh, yes, you have to go to Buddha. Yes, you have to go to Joseph Smith. Yes, you have to go to Selassie. You have to go to Hail Selassie. Yes, but when it comes on to our God, when it comes on to our God, oh my friends, he not just stood there and you go to him, but he came to us. Oh my friends, so the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that who that the world should not perish but if we believe in him we should have everlasting life he's a going god he's a reaching out god he's a god that went to Jairus's daughter oh my god he's a god that went right over to Zacchaeus's house and my friends he's a god that reached out to you one day when you were lost and undone without God or his son the songwriter said when he reached down his hand for me I love that song it said when he reached way down for me I was anybody was lost anybody was way down anybody was in the pits lost and undone like the prodigal son but thanks be to God he came for me he came from heaven to earth to show the way. Woo! And from the earth to the cross. 
and from the cross to the grave my god i love jesus that's why i love him so oh because he loved me first hallelujah i didn't love him first in fact i couldn't love him first but because of his great love hallelujah shed abroad in our hearts that's why we are gathered here today because jesus reached out to us it wasn't the Mennonite church that reached out to us. It wasn't Liston Aiken that reached out to us. It was God himself. Hallelujah. He looked on you. He saw that you were, you were string. And he said, go, I will go to you. I will reach out to you. He's a good God. I it make me love him, so. I make me have to go on, go on, so. So I'm, you know, so I'm kind of excited for God right now. And the volume might a little turn up because I have a mic in my throat. But I can't help it. Because when I think of the goodness of... And what he has done for me. My soul... Come now somebody man. My soul cries out. Some of you, God not do nothing for you so you can't say nothing but if you know that God took you out if you know he brought you out if you know that he lifted you out somebody give a shout for hallelujah Woo! hallelujah hallelujah my God my God he's a good God yes proactive proactive he proactively reached out to us but also proactive for me means that he came that man is today without excuse without excuse because he reached out to us we don't have to try to find him because he came to us he revealed himself to us. He says, Simia, are you me comfort? Then how now are we going to turn our backs on him and say a theme fault? Oh, my friends, the Bible says that the Lord himself has appeared unto us all men the grace of God has prepared unto all men nobody's without excuse especially in Jamaica where we have so much Mennonite church and so much other churches nobody has excuse we only have to say yes the God of Daniel and the God of Jacob has appeared unto me what a God we are without excuse he came implies that he's proactive he came implies also that man is without excuse he came also implies the servant attitude with which christ came because he came and he came as a lowly servant he came as a humble servant he came and him just a cool, you know, him now, him now profile. In fact, in fact, when I look at song them, where, where my little sister Liston would have sing, is that he could have, he could have called. You remember that tune eh? 10,000 angels, Lord of mercy. Hey, when, when we used to lick that tune in a church, you know, can them sang the stop sing now. You know, uh, when we used to lick them sing, like, hey, cho, them sang the, them sang the sweet, you know. Uh, yeah, man. Um, song they used to they, when they, and we used to sing it in a, with one little exercise book you know, or a, a phone we are sing out and now but remember when we used to sing out a hard copper hard copper exercise book they nail the hands of jesus <laughs> But it is so true, the words are so right that he could have called 10,000 angels. You see, if it was all me, let me all move around my ball pit. We can't cast us around the holy days. You see, if all me, then put on the cross. You see, if I'm me, then put. Look for me, good enough. Look for me, coming out. Joke right now. You see, if I'm me, Lord, oh, they must stream me. You see, if I was ever put on that cross. Me done out the whole of them. The whole of them get done out. You couldn't put me on no cross. Oh, me? NASA? 
but my Jesus humble himself lowly as ever you know some of us need to learn to humble come now man some of us too big some of us have too much chest small up you remember when he used to go in a little minivan them and them said small up yourself lord god if you're not small up yourself you're not holy in the bus lord uh, let me tell you this gospel train uh, if you don't know how to small up yourself you're not going to make it uh, touch the person beside you and say small up you yes yeah, small up yourself my god thank you sir my God. Me get it so let me use it. Me carry kerchief you know, but me forget so me have it. My Lord. Woo. He was a servant. You know, there's a book written by Jim Collins by the name of From, From Good to Great. And he looked at, in that book, he looked at companies that were doing extremely well. They were already good. And so those companies were now moved from good to great. Like the, these big multinational corporations around the world. And, and he said that there was one thing, there was one thing that he noticed about all of these companies. And it wasn't that they had great MBA people running it. No, it wasn't that they had men and not women being the CEOs. No, 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 not in this world. It wasn't that they, they were people who, who uh, pushed training and development. No, he said that there was one common thread amongst all of these companies. And it is that the CEO displayed the quality of humility that's all he said that the, the only thing that made international multi-million dollar corporations move from a stage of good which they can stay at to another level called great is the common thread of humility so you see when we tell you if you smile up yourself like a while ago I want to laugh after me and go and like say a foolishness me attack. I mm. know foolishness me attack, you know. Me say, if you don't know how to smile up, you nah go make it. You can't, as one of my brother in a church said, you can't attack. Any mother and father who don't know how to lick up themselves and push up. That's what he said. That the CEO would go behind the next level leaders and they would just push up just push up the next level and push up the next level any boss any politician any pastor will go on like say a them run things they now reach nowhere because the people them under them now go grow it take a humble man to, it take a man who can go up on the cross and say take me life so that the others may live when you do that other people grow other people get strong other people get bigger other people get mad let me tell you if you want others to grow small up you that's why they say that's why they say mothers that's why they say mothers are so loved by children in relation to father at least in Jamaica not in Virginia uh, and 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 sometimes I see it, you know, and just vex me. Cause you know when I look around, you know, it's a mother, and the mother. I mean, I say, what did them do? They, them don't know the amount of sacrifice me make. But let me tell you, sometimes women in this country, they know how to go behind them children, <laughs> uh, and just and just smile up themselves. Just display the attitude. I know that you may think, well, how does this relate, Pastor? May I apply the text, brother? That may I do right now. I am applying the text. Because if you leave the text in isolation by itself, you will never get the message that if you want the world, if you want Jamaica to be better, if you want your family to be better, you have to take on the lifestyle of Jesus. If you want your church to shine and to strive, you have to take on the quality of humanity that when we say he came he came in he came in humility he came in humbleness
yes as we would say in Jamaica and so the world today is stronger because there is a Jesus behind the church that is humble and just pushing up the church yeah I could have said holy more than that but let me skip it and go down to the next point he was proactive by being humble and by being pro and being outreaching but also he was preaching he was preaching so the scripture says he came and preached peace so he came and he was preaching yes my friends when we talk about preaching we're talking about the proclamation of the good news that's what we're talking about we're talking about a Jesus who never just came and sat in a high tower office and allow and allow people to just come and report to him what's going on in the field <laughs> he never did that he never did that he he was he was a God who came and went into the field he came and he went into Galilee he came and went back into Nazareth he came and went into Capernaum he went all over and he was just doing good oh my friends he was a proclaimer he was a declarer of the truth oh that we could find some new some new christ-like men and christ-like women who can say i have heard the joyful sound jesus saves jesus saves spread the tidings all around we want some mennonite young people to get up from off their rear end and get into communities get into homes get on the streets and declare that jesus christ is lord we want some firebrand men and women in the mennonite church to say i will not stay home but i will get into the nation and I will declare I will proclaim I will preach where are the people of the Mennonite church this movement will never grow unless there are people who are willing to say I am ready I am willing to be a proclaimer when I go to work I'm going to share the word oh yes when I go, when I go to school, I will share the word. Yes, we need some people like that. We need some people like that. Oh, my friends, that God could find someone like that in this very congregation. That's what happened with myself and brother Pastor Liston as we, as we, as we tore up the place for Jesus, as we went to our school. And my God, God forgive us because sometime when we were supposed to be studying, I confess right now. I confess. I tell you the truth, your father could have, well, he could have done a little better. But we were just totally consumed by the work of God. And, and our primary aim and focus was just to spread the gospel of Jesus. And in doing that, we just saw youngsters, youngsters just coming to know Christ. In fact, at one time, it felt like the whole school had loved the Lord. It seemed as if the whole school had come to know Jesus Christ because there were some little teenage boys who were saying, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, yes, you can use me. We used to say, take my hands, Lord, and my feet, and touch my heart, Lord, speak through me. Hey, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Let me just run the chorus one more time, Lord. Men and I, church, it's hey. And if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me sing the song with me now and if you can use anything you lord you can use me take my hands and my feet come on so take my hands lord take my feet touch my heart lord speak through me you can use 
anything, Lord. He was preaching. He was proclaiming. But the other thing I noticed is that he was peace-giving. He was peace-giving. And I hope that God can allow me not to get excited on this one. Call, call me too excited. <laughs> Praise God. I see my brother and my sister-in-law around there. Uh, and it's good to see them. We were in church this morning. I owe them catch us all. <laughs> my God. You look like a church. Send them to come spy me out to the hero. And maybe one thing that he has done is just as how me come to turn tanks, my brother come to turn tanks too. My sister-in-law is one of the finest Christians I have ever seen. I'm telling you, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. One of the finest Christians I've ever seen. And a lot of her roots is in the Mennonite Church of Jamaica. Yeah. <laughs> God bless you, Claudette. We love you. As we were saying in Jamaica, like cook food. I don't know how spiritual that is. I don't know when I have Bible that there, but I saw me love you. <laughs> oh my God. He was peace giving. You know what the scripture says? When you look on the text, it says, He came and He preached peace to you that were afar away and peace to those who were near. You know, if you should look from verse 14 to verse 17, one of the things that you would realize is that peace is basically mentioned in every verse between 14 and 17. I know that there is one verse that doesn't have peace in it. But by the time you come to verse 17, you see peace twice. So we put one of them peace there, another verse there. In other words, in the, in the book of Ephesians, which is called and referred to, by many theologians as the jewel of the New Testament. That's, that's, how, that's how beautiful the book of Ephesians is. So that it is called the jewel of the New Testament. In that book and in this portion of scripture, peace is a prominent theme in that passage. Peace. When we talk about peace using the original language, Greek, it's Irene which is harmonious relations and freedom from disputes. So it has a positive connotation to it and it has a negative connotation. Positively, it is saying that there is a, a harmonious relationships. My God. And you know, harmonious relationships is so wonderful. When, when people can be in harmony, it's a beautiful thing. When people can live in unity, it is a beautiful, it is a beautiful thing. In fact, um, you know, when my sister was, uh, um, yeah, mm -hmm, we had some discussions uh, about how relationships work. And, you know, one of the theories say that, you know, in, in, in some, some relationships can be classified as conflicted relationships. And some relationships can be classified as uh, a devitalized relationships and other relationships can be classified as conventional relationships but there's another relationship another relationship between husband and a wife that is that is a beautiful one and it's called the harmonious relationship and they say that in a harmonious relationship a harmonious uh, uh, love relationship that those relationships are characterized by a lot of uh, satisfaction that those 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 partners are usually very happy god <laughs> yeah that those those relationships are are featured by by a lot of synergy and synchronization between the husband and the wife harmony in fact, harmonious relationships can sound much the same way like when this praise team came up here and they are singing. And, and I say, well, the praise teams of the Mennonite church are no different over the years. 
They sound sweet. In fact, in fact, you're not supposed to get more. You know, so you have some more offering for you because of the prayer steam here. I am telling you, you, you know that a lot of us are, are ungrateful about worship. Do you know how much years of, of solidification of voice and bringing together of the tones? <laughs> I'm telling you, that would have happened for this group to sound the way they sound. And do you know that if you were out in the world and you were going to hear a group like this sing, that if you know about three thousand dollar, you can't hear them. You, you don't know what I'm talking about, man. You know I'm telling you today that the harmony that I heard belting out from these ladies. I mean, I mean, the only thing missing from this group was me. They really sound good. Yeah. And when you listen to them, you hear the voices just locking together. And sometimes, you know, like I was looking on them from behind because I wasn't in front. I mean, I try to figure out, I take a side view of them. I mean, I look on the mouth to see which one of them are sing what. I mean, can't figure it out. I mean, just lock up together so much that I don't know who's singing the high part and the low part and the melody part and the, and the alto part. I just can't work it out. Them just lock up together. Yeah, well, the Bible says, the Bible said that when Jesus came, he came to preach. Yeah, yeah, see him, sir. Kuyoto. <laughs> me no man. Me, from me coming here, me I look female. <laughs> harmony, harmony. He came to preach harmony when he came to preach peace. But also, he came on the negative side to free us from disputes, to free us from disputes. And this is what I want to get to. To allow my Virginian brethren to, to hear this and hear this good. Because <laughs> before I went to the church that I'm at now, I was at another church. And that church was in a highly volatile community. And can I tell you, can I tell you, that church, that church actually now has a zozo in it. Because we're going to ramp up there. You know, we, we go and board up there. Like we're not no sense up there. <laughs> and, and you know, you, you know uh, we were just murdering, murdering, murder. People were just being murdered. I, I remember there was one time when a dancer keep, you know, and, and a guy, a guy are walking at the dance with him crow. You know, so I saw you walk, go and dance. You understand? Like, you know, go on, I like, couldn't you know. You know it's, it's, you don't know what I'm going out of the world, you know. And so, as about, about 10 gangsters come in, and him just a walk, and you know, you have them gate man at the dance, you know. So, gate man at the dance, and him, him just a twist up his mouth, and, and, the, and his foot just push out, because so you do it, you know. Yeah, and you, how me look? Yeah. And so, the boy, them a walk in, and one of them just step on him foot, you know, him step by accident, you know. He don't really mean it, you know. And me said, the boy, Come up and he give him one lick, lick down the boy I grow. And then after him get licked down, he said, What? I don't you do to me, I don't you do to me. And then him go, him go in the back end of the community and him come back with one barrage of man. And him just, him just, him just take out the one there. And then after him take out the one there, by the next day, him said, What? You take out me? Well, me, I go back in a year coming. And I just saw it ago. You know it going to Jamaica. <laughs> but you know what happened? You know what happened? There were some gentlemen, not a part of the church, who got in touch with an institution. I'm telling you, this is no joke thing, may I tell you now. The young men got in touch with an institution called Eastern Mennonite University. And they heard that is in 
Harrisonburg, Virginia. <laughs> and they heard about a Summer Peace Builders Institute. And they came together, came to some churches and said, could you help us to go to that place to understand what peace is all about? They were sponsored to go to Virginia. And we sent youngsters from that community to the Summer Peace Building Institute for a number of years. And while that was happening, murder still going on. Let me tell you something. It takes a long time to bring peace, you know. Peace is an expensive thing, you know. And if you have it, guard it with your life. You see, if you and your wife now cuss and fight, you know better protect that, you know. Because, because one little step on foot, you know, can't just say, oh, who you deal with? You know, one little, one little, uh, uh, one little attitude, you know, can say, oh, 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 we are going with. I don't hear no amen right now, you know. I notice I'm not hearing no amen. <laughs> and I feel that some man I get a little poke in at them side, right? <laughs> and you know, we tried, we tried, we tried. Every year, sending people, they come back, we build a little group called Peace Builders, and then try them, try people. But there was one year in 2016, I think it is, that God just brought, after the many years of trying, sending young men and women to the Peace Building uh, Institute and coming back and learning all of the strategies and the skills, and there was one entire year, one whole year, when not one murder, not one murder, one whole year. Now, let me tell you, that, that there was a, a situation once, just, uh, just like from here, go up to Manning's Hill Road up there. Uh, my church is like here, and then you had a bar up the top, you know? One little bar. We don't know how seven men get for holy night. And seven men in the bar. Because you know that little whingy bar there. And seven men in a bar. And two men. So that how much man that God know? How much man in there now? Seven plus two. No, 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 yeah, there are no nine men. And two men going there with gun in there. And shoot the seven of them in there. One time in there. Five just dead right this time. In there. One time. So I'm a joke business me I talk about. I mean, I talk one, one man. Five, one time. And in the space of one year, zero. Zero. So I come to say thanks to the Mennonite Church, both in Jamaica and in Virginia, for the fantastic work that you have done. Because you have carried the message of peace. In fact, one of the things that the Mennonite church is known for worldwide is the idea of peace. And I have come to realize that that is maybe one of the biggest messages in the world. That maybe the big message of the world for, or of Jamaica should be what? Peace. It's peace we need to be talking about. Maybe more than love we're supposed to be talking about peace. No wonder in this text, peace is so often referred to right in this very text. And now the Mennonite church in Jamaica is embracing it and say we are going after peace. Mennonite church, I salute you. And don't bother just sit down in a little church and I talk about peace. And I talk about peace, peace. Wonderful peace. You know, oh, we church people can sing. We love slur coming down from the Savior. <laughs> I know that the peace that we are talk about. We want to see real peace. We come into communities and make a difference and bring harmony and bring unity and bring one accord. That Jamaica needs peace. Temple all need peace. My God, um, Walter, uh, this road here, wait him again. 
Whitehall Avenue need peace. All of Jamaica. Come on. If the Mennonite church can rise up and bring peace in every nook and cranny of this country, Jamaica will be better. Jamaica will be better. Let me move on because after a while, people know I hear a pastor say, they say, stop no pastor. So he was peace giving. He was preaching. He was, he was, what's the third one I said? He was proactive. But the fourth one I want to leave with you today is that he was progressive. The Bible said, when you look in the text, the scripture says right there in the text, he came and he preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. And when you read the entire text, you get the impression that Jesus was creating equality between those who were far and those who were near. Those who were far in distance but also far spiritually. And those who were near should never feel as if they were better from, than those who were far. Because we are all sinners saved by grace. That none of we are better than the other. You know, one of the problems in this country, I will go on. May I tell you, take it from me you now. I, I, I love everything I tell you about. There is too much segmentation between upper class and lower class. Between the rich and the poor. I make man a thief, sir. And I make man a kill, sir. Because they want a piece of the pie, too. But if we were one, if we were more on a level ground, everybody's not going to have the same amount of riches. But come on, man. The distance is too wide. In fact, when they did the economic survey many years ago, they found that Jamaica was in the top bottom or the bottom segment of the nations of the world that had the biggest disparity between the rich and the poor. Some man must get bad and go on bad in a country. As some man go on bad. When they look and they see you are good, you know, that vehicle outside the vehicle. I don't call the name, yeah. And then them have to walk in you know, the Hudson, 10 miles. And them say that can't work. No, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not vex about the vehicle out there still. All walk, walk, you know. <laughs> no, we're not vex about the vehicle. But all we are say, the man them there at the bottom must kind of come up to. And we must do something to bring them up. You can't have some people up there so, and a one bag of people down here and figure say everything going to be cool and dandy. It do work, so brother. It doesn't work like that. We need to be on a more balanced footing. And one of the places where their ground is level is right at the foot of the cross. Right where Jesus is. Yes, he has created a level playing field. We are all one in Jesus. My God, you know, see how the whole of we turn in here. Some of we, some of we are, some people in here have money, you know. Do you think I, you think I whole of we poor? No, but I have some Mennonite people with money. But when we come together, when we come together as one, it is as if we are one in the Lord. There's a song that says, get together, get together. You know that tune, eh? Get together in the Lord. Let us all get together in the Lord. Let us greet. Come on, come on. Enter and brother, let us all get together. Run the tune one more time. Come on. Oh, get together. Get. Oh, get together. Woo. Oh, let us. Uh, let me come over here. So let me come. Hey, 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 hey. What miss it? What miss it? Woo. Oh, shout. What you say? Ah. Uh, gather. Cease and settle. Like water in a kettle. Hold it there. Church is a good place. That is why, that is why, that is why the statistics have shown, the research rather has shown that the children, the, the adolescents in Jamaica that have done best in their school is church picnic. Mennonite children 
New Testament children, Baptist children. You know why? When they come to church, they are lifted. Yeah, yeah, they are lifted. They have a new lease on life. They have a new understanding of themselves. They know that God has called them and they are going higher and not lower because they that wait upon the Lord. Come on, man. When you come to church and you hear them verse, they know it perk you up. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. We can't go on, so in a minute, church. We can't go on, so they will mount up with wings like like eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint come on somebody when you come to church you get lifted up Woo! mighty god yes yes my sisters and brothers so he was not just peace giving but he was progressive he saw everybody as one that's why you can't have some deacon who can barely read, but them a deacon. And when you, when you talk to them, you have to address them, Deacon Brown. And, and sometimes, them the deacon, the deacon, better than other deacon who have enough paper, but not nah deac. You yeah, so usher. Them the usher, they can't usher, brother. They can't barely count the money, you know. But them love the Lord. And them know how to work in the kingdom of God. And they get lifted up. They are, they are usher label. And they walk around like them in control. And God just, God just spruce them up. Oh God. Anybody, anybody since you get saved, you get a spruce up. Anybody gets, anybody since you get saved, you get spruce up. Lord God. You see a lack of me, so Be not supposed to be here right now, you know man. But the grace of God has spruced me up. God, woo, Lord, oi, me not sing no more, but the song said, look what he did when he touched me, look for me, oh me look to you, you think so me, you think so me is as, me is as young as me look, but God give me baby face, God. A time you don't know. A time. <laughs> Woo. Let me tell you the last thing that I see in the text, and I close on this point. He was propagating. He was propagating. And I noticed two different types of propagating that I want to leave with you. The first one is a missional one. Because the scripture says that he, let me make sure that I am quoting the verse properly. The scripture says in the text that he came and he preached peace to you that were far away. He preached peace to you that were far away. Yeah. And, and some of them were far away, as I said, geographically. And others may have been far away spiritually. And as I think of that, I think about the, the brethren who were in a little uh, town in Virginia who were worshiping the Lord. They could have stayed there. They didn't have to come here. But they understood what Christianity was all about. That Christianity was never authentic unless you carried it into another area, into another location, into another zone. And so a couple of them packed up their things and came to Jamaica. And while I was going to Swallowfield, a lot of them were still in this very church. And they looked so holy. I thought that they looked like that, you know. Obviously, it was a part of my own, um, you know, socialization. Uh, you know, they looked so holy. <laughs> Not true, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we are telling you, you know. But, but they came and they just hung out with us. They look different from us, but they hung out with us. They shared the gospel. They couldn't share it like me. Me know the language, me know patwa, me know the vibe, me can't wriggle up my body. Cause a long time, I burn my burn yeah. You understand me? So me know how to contextualize the faith. They knew nothing about that. They came with a different accent. They came with a different shade. They came with a different background. They came with a different history, but they came anyhow. And because of that, look what the Lord 
has done today look at the conference today because somebody came and so I want to say to you you have to go somewhere to do all that we can pack up here so somebody have to go to Trinidad man somebody must go to Antigua somebody must go to St. Kitts somebody must go to Guyana and say we have heard the joyful sound that Jesus saves there is a little boy waiting on you in Barbados if you could only get there the child will be saved somebody needs to go somebody needs to go somebody needs to take up pack up your dulcimina and go everybody cast here rise up somebody and say I am willing I am available let me tell you let me tell you about going missionally and I'm going to close soon but let me tell you something when you go missionally today it can be different from yesterday you know? because yesterday the Virginia people they would just come here as full-time missionaries and spend one and two years five years seven years ten years some of them died in Jamaica but you know you can do it a different way too you know you, you know you know that God give you a skill God gave you a skill you know and you have something named carry coming in a job in the Caribbean you know and you know if you just say all right I am going as a plumber or I'm going as a teacher or as I'm going as a doctor and I'm going to, to, to the, uh, the Grenadines, a small little island. And I'm just going to offer my service there. And while you're offering the service, man, you're meeting some youngsters into a home. You're starting a little Sunday school. You're starting a little youth club. <laughs> a community club. Them don't know, say, a Jesus club you're starting and you start a little community club and you just introduce the faith to those kids come on what about you professionals what about you tradesmen and tradeswomen why don't you just get up and go and give six months give a year to the ministry and just watch God do a mighty work God is looking for somebody like that where is that principle God has his Jamaican people all over the world I remember a, a, a musician, a singer, came to Jamaica some time ago. I don't know how many of you would have heard that testimony. And they went to Portland. And while she went, while she went to Portland, there was um, her husband drowned. And, and she said that while she was in her hotel room, there was just a, a little lady who came to clean up the room and saw her crying and just ministered to her. Just gave unto her salvation. Give her Jesus at that point in time. You, you, you can become that person. Maybe in another place. And just do what God has called you to do. It is because people went. Why you are today what you are. Yes. Because he came and preached peace to those that were far away. But can I tell you the other side of the coin. It says, and he came to preach peace to those who were near. Who were near. It's not only about going ab abroad. It's also about sharing the gospel where you are. Where you are to your neighbor. To your friends. I went to a funeral yesterday. And it was just, just heartwarming to hear how this woman who was, who was a, you know, one of them hatty <laughs> hatty girl when she was young. She said it to her own family, her grandchildren. But when she became a big woman, she walked away from all of that. And she just became a big witness in her community. Was just doing great things for youngsters all around. And they all respected her for her quality of life. Come on, we're looking for some people who can go into a school. Yeah, teachers, do you know what they say? I went, I listened to a recent study being on one of the, the task force of the uh, Ministry of Education. And they said that some boys in Jamaica, they, they don't have any home in a man. They don't have any parents as such. All they need is a teacher to love them. For you to be their parent. For you to be their help. 
there's one young man I heard of. He came down to Jamaica. No, right now. Right, right now. Come on, my church. He, he's, he's, he, he, he come from the U.S. Bought by a track team in Jamaica, a high school. <laughs> and the boy out here, him one, you know. As a teenager, you know. He might have rent a room in a one gated community and put him one inside there, you know. And it's him, one living, you know. Him responsible for himself, you know. You see what's going on in the world? A boy like that needs help. You know, he comes to my youth fellowship every Friday. Without parental support. In good. God will protect that they want the boy. Because athlete, tall, dark, a little less handsome than me, but handsome. My God. That woman, that parent clearly don't understand Jamaican girls. We don't joke out here, you know? Jamaica needs help. And all that it needs are some persons who are going to say, I am available. My will I give to you. Yes, use me, Lord. To show someone the way. How many of us are ready to say, Yes, Pastor, I'm ready, man. Here am I, Pastor. Use me for your, your purpose, Lord. Because my storage is empty and I am available. Stand with me, somebody. Stand with me right across this building. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. Oh Lord, I'm available to you. My will I give to you. I do what you say. Use me, Lord, to show. here today and as you listen you may have laughed at many things that I said but in your spirit God was speaking to you God was speaking to you and as you listen you're saying Lord this is my word today I want to invite someone to come to this altar a young man a young woman who is saying I'm available it's propagation time the world is looking for men and women who can say, Lord, here am I. Use me. The first time I said that was at 13. When I said, Lord, as the worst behaving boy in the class, Jesus, just take me up. At 15, I said, Lord, I'm ready to declare your word. God, take me and use me all over. Preaching all over, all over Jamaica. Come on, somebody. It doesn't matter your age. If you are Caleb, there is a mountain for God to give to you. Come to this altar today. If you hear the voice of God, if you hear the call of God, step out and come. Come and stand up at this altar and say, Here am I, Lord. I'm available. Come on, come on. There is a young man in your community that is waiting on you. Somebody in Jamaica is waiting on, com on a commitment to be made this morning, this afternoon. Somebody in Jamaica is waiting, waiting for somebody that is available. Lord, I'm available.
It's the last time we're singing. My if you hear the call of God, I give to you. If you hear the voice of God, I'll do what you say. If you hear say, the appeal of the Spirit, you step from where you are. heads with me everywhere you know maybe if you're a Christian maybe you didn't come up here but maybe God wants you to make a commitment where you are my God why don't you just touch someone else beside you you don't even have to hold a hand if you don't want to hold a hand we know people stayed in these times but just put your hand on somebody's shoulder now maybe or maybe you can just hold a hand if they're you can't wash it after. Oh God. The Mennonite church leadership in Jamaica is saying it cannot be the same. It cannot be the same. We want to bring love and peace. We want to bring hope to this nation. Somebody needs to make that commitment right now. Right now. The Mennonite church in Jamaica is saying we're taking over the Caribbean. If that is going to happen, it's going to take somebody to do it. Somebody needs to say, ah. yes. Somebody needs to say, use me, Lord. Somebody needs to say, my storage is empty. Oh, as you're touching somebody in your seat right now, the same thing is happening at this altar. Men and women are calling upon the name of the Lord at this altar. Come on, church. Let's just turn this into a concert of prayer. Wherever you are right now, just call upon the name of the Lord. Somebody just recommit where you are. Just make a commitment. Everybody, just call. I know you may not be used to this in your, in your congregation. But everybody, just begin to pray. Just begin to make that commitment. Just begin to say, Lord, I surrender all. Just begin to say, I surrender all. Just begin to say, I yield myself. Come on. Yes, Lord, they are praying. Men and women are praying in their seats. They are praying at the altar, calling upon you, dear God. Touch us today. Help us, oh God. Help me, oh God. Refire me, oh Jesus. Oh God, I know I'm in full-time ministry. But oh God, stir up the coals of fire in my own life. Give me a revival, dear God. Jesus, warm my heart again. Lord God, I call upon you, God, for more anointing. Jesus, do it in my life. Touch me again, Lord. This moment I feel like a fresh touch. God, let some drops now. Come on, somebody, ask your God to do it again in your life. In the name of Jesus. Woo! We yield our lives to you again. We offer ourselves to you once again, O God. Do it in Stevenson Samuels' life. Lord, the, the Mennonite church is making another commitment to you. Come on, Mennonite church. 
Commit yourself to God again. Make a recommitment to the call of mission, to the call of evangelism. Let's watch God work. Christian here who is giving your heart to the Lord. You're not, you're not a Christian, but you're coming to give your heart to the Lord. Anybody like that today? Anybody like that? You're giving your heart to the Lord. I want to lead us today in a commitment as a conference. Um, Pastor Samuels and I have not had a conversation about the vision statement. But earlier on this year, last year, when we prayed and went into retreat, Pastor Kennedy said, this statement has given him new energy. And basically, same thoughts that pastor shared today were those sentiments. I want to challenge Jamaica Mennonite Church to challenge God to his word that we're going to sow, we're going to plant and that God will give the increase. I want us to believe God tenfold, twentyfold, a hundredfold. But we have to be willing to plant, to get our hands dirty, to water, to get bruised, and God will do his part. Thank you very much, Pastor, for sharing the word. There is a gap in the gospel. There is a gap in the gospel in the Caribbean. And I sense that God is leading us to fill the gap it's a, with the message of peace. There's a message of peace that is often not being preached. In fact, a lot of other believers are saying, if them trouble me, 
we are going to do back something. We are saying, that's not we're here, what we're hearing. We're hearing God saying, we're going to do it the other way. That's what we're hearing. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be challenging. People don't call you a fool. Like on the other sense. But there's a story in Mennonite history of a gentleman who was being pursued by his enemies. And as he ran away from his enemies, they got stuck in some icy water and fell down. And he went back for them. He went back for the person who was pursuing him. He went back and took him out of the cold, icy water. And he was killed. The persons who destroyed his life never forgot the witness and turned their lives over to Christ because a man who they were trying to kill turned back and take them out of danger and that was the gospel message to them they turned around their life and turned around many others we have a message and I'm going to ask you to make a minute at church today to make a commitment to God we're going to bring this message to the nooks and crannies of Jamaica, the Caribbean. We don't know where we're going to go say yet. When I said King St. Lucia, St. Vincent, we don't know. We want to say, God, you know, but Lord, I'm available. Could we all stand at this time? Let's pray. Pray after me. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. You are the head of the church. You designed the church. You have called us. The mission is yours. The vision is yours. You have given it unto us. We accept it. Lord, we accept it. We accept it in our hearts. Give us the strength. Give us the faith to believe you and to go. In the name of Jesus, we commit ourselves to your vision in Jesus' name. We commit ourselves, Lord, to your vision in Jesus' name. And we know that your vision brings success in Jesus' name. God has never lost a battle. Today, we have committed ourselves to this task. We're going to go some of you are going to meet people in the banks, at your workplace, wherever, in your homes. You're probably going to get some calls from people abroad. So what happened to that? Somebody can say, come over here. The Holy Spirit will work in some mysterious ways. Just be open. Yes. Pastor Samuel, let's close this prayer for us, please. Let's close off and let us affirm this prayer. Let me just pray. Let's pray. Lord, we just want to thank you for your word and for the worship, the rich worship that we experience today. We want to thank you, Lord, that the Mennonite Church in Jamaica is alive and well. We just want to declare that right now, that, oh God, you have raised up leaders and workers to sustain this uh, church in Jamaica. And now, Lord, the Mennonite Church is saying, we want to take it further. And Lord, even as the Mennonite Church comes together in the 65th year, Lord God, we ask that you will strengthen this church, cause the various congregations to go back in every nook and cranny of Jamaica and make a difference. 
So thank you, Lord. Bless your name. I pray for the pastors. Lord, may you strengthen them. Give them insight and foresight as they seek to lead congregations across this nation with creativity and courage. We pray that you will strengthen and anoint them. God, we commit all of the members and adherents of the Mennonite church to you. And we ask that you will guide us and lead us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much, sir. I think there's a... Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Seaton. Um, Pass hands, you're going to come? Or oh, Sir Natalie? Okay, Sir Natalie. Come. Uh, could you put your hands together for the man of God who spoke to us so well? And um, whoever, whoever leads this church, um, always remember that the pastor say peace of this church is his. <laughs> always remember that. <laughs> pastor Stevenson, let us put our hand together for the pastor again. <laughs> On behalf of the Jamaica Mennonite Church, I want to say thank you. And this is a token of our appreciation. Surely this afternoon we are blessed, we are inspired, we are encouraged to go. God bless you. What a day it has been. What a word. What a word. Nobody not supposed to hungry now. If you want more, you crave. Blessings. I just want to say thank you, Dr. Stephen Samuels. I want us all to just stretch our hands toward the man of God and just bless him. Father, we thank you for your servant who has given so much today. Lord, we thank you, God, for the outpouring. We thank you, Almighty God, for the impact of the word that came from the throne of grace. Lord, I pray that as he leave, Almighty God, this spot of ground, Lord God Almighty, I pray for protection. I pray, God, for his family. I pray for coverage. Lord, I pray that as he continue to minister, Lord, you will pour out much more than he poured into us today. Mighty God, I I thank you that your word will not go return void and so father God be with him every step of this way provide for him in ways Lord God that he can never even imagine Lord God I just want to give you thanks for his ministry and his obedience in the name of Jesus amen hallelujah hallelujah thank you thank you so much we bless the Lord. It is, it is all about Jesus. All about the Holy Spirit. Nothing of us. We take no credit for ourselves. Hallelujah. At this time, we have two other presentations. Presentation to the past conference planning committee member. And presentation to past directors of the Maranatha School Board. And then... We'll have an announcement about the lunch and so forth, and the closing prayer will be by Pastor Vince Holland. We now invite Sister Shelley Hines to come, and we invite Lady Jolene Aiken to come. Praise the Lord. 
Sister Jolene Aiken, it is indeed my esteemed pleasure to present to you this token on behalf of the Jamaica Mennonite Church and the Conference Planning Committee for your dedication, commitment to the work and the ministry. Wonderful woman of God, hallelujah. And we hope that you will continue to share your gift as you continue to work in the ministry of God. God bless you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. Bless the Lord. At this time, we just want to take a moment to recognize, recognize our leaders who have served at the Maranatha School Board. We invite the following persons to the stage we have also a special presentation to the late Douglas Sr. and his wife, Sister Sidna Sr. will accept that award, but we will come to you, Sister Sidna. So I'm going to invite Evangelist Marvin Davis, Pastor William Broughton, and Sister Precious Kennedy to the podium, please. So lady, Sister Regina is assisting me. So on behalf of the Jamaica Mennonite Church, our first presentation will go to Sister Evangelist Marvin Davis. On behalf of the Jamaica Mennonite Church, we take great pleasure in giving you this award for your tremendous work to the Maranatha School Board. And we're sure that you're ready for more work. So when it comes up again, we'll give you some more work. Bless the Lord. Thank you so much for your service. Sister Precious Kennedy. We take great pleasure in awarding you with this plaque for your years of service and dedication to the Maranatha School Board. Bless you. Pastor William Broughton. A tremendous work. I'm sure if I prepared something, it would be sheets and sheets of information of the tremendous work Pastor Broughton has given to the Maranatha work, and he continues to work. So, Pastor Broughton, we know you will not stop, so we know we'll have your experience to call upon when we need it. Thank you so very much for your years of service and dedication. Thank you. Thank you for your service. And Sister Regina will proceed to Sister Sidna Senior in the audience. We are presenting it to the late Brother Douglas Senior, Pastor Douglas Senior, for his tremendous work to the efforts. We are truly appreciative for his dedication and years of service to Christ. It has indeed been invaluable, and we take the time now to honor his memory. Thank you so very much.
Okay, thank you so very much for your patience. We know the time has been far spent, but we are about to break for lunch shortly. I think lunch is on its way for those who ordered. So just please bear with us until it arrives. We would love for the persons who made orders through their churches just to have one representative approach the area where the food is being served so that we can have some order. So that one person will come to collect and then you can distribute it according to your listing, how you have ordered. We also have a lovely display of books at the table at the back and we're being asked to just take a moment to go and browse and see what can benefit your mind just to be creative and to learn more. There are mugs with scripture verses, many inspirational books, there are wall hangings and inspirational verses. And I also understand that there are two books about the Mennonite faith, which if you want to learn more, you can always get them at the back. It's Beliefs, Mennonite Faith and Practice. And we have another one, Stories, How the Mennonites Came to Be. So if you want to learn more about us, you can um, purchase those books at the back. So that's, okay, awesome. So just in case you're not feeling too well or you think you need some medical assistance, we do have a doctor in the house today. I'm not sure if she'll be filling any prescriptions, but, <laughs> but if you're not feeling well right now, you can just check in and see if you need any help, okay? So where's the doctor? To the back, at the right? My right, your left? Doctor, doctor, where are you? Sister Janice, Dr. Janice. All right, she's there somewhere. So you'll find her. It's to the back beyond the, the partition. Oh, she's right there on the corridor. So if you need help, she is right here with us. Okay, I'm turning back over to our moderator who will close up. Thank you. Sorry, Pastor Holland. Just trying to find uh, the driver of uh, Honda 5962 HQ. Somebody has to leave right now, yeah? 5962 HQ, please. Good afternoon, everyone. Who's the conference done? <laughs> conference just a come. The more they day has been spent as long spent it's after two but there's nobody here I'm sure who can say that they have not spent a wonderful time in the house of the Lord come on let's give a shout out let's give a praise worship we are about to close the first session I'm gonna invite the congregation to all stand you know I knew something special was going to take place and from yesterday you felt it at the business session and it has carried over into this session and you know I've been to conferences and some people say you can't go on you could have gone but the one here sell off yes, wonderful wonderful conference and we give God all the glory and all the praise and so we are going to close off this session in prayer I invite you to close your eyes bow your heads where you are Heavenly Father, our God, we thank you, Father, for your leadings from morning until now. Lord, it is so good to be in your house. And Lord, we thank you for the way in which you have led us. We thank you, Lord, for the leading of your Holy Spirit in the praise and worship that has been so inspirational. We thank you, Lord, for the prayers that have been lifted up to heaven that, Lord, have lifted our spirits. We thank you, Lord, for the spectacular preaching. Lord, we just thank you for your man's servant, Dr. Samuels. And Lord, we pray that you will continue, O oh God, to enable him to continue to bring the word to your people. We thank you, Lord, for the Mennonite church. That, Lord, we, our emphasis on peace, O oh God, which we so need in Jamaica and the Caribbean and beyond. We thank you, Lord, that we continue to give your peace. 
Lord, we ask that you bless us now and you dismiss us from this session. We pray for the lunch, O oh God, that is about to be served from whatever source, O oh God, of whatever kind it may be, O oh Lord. We pray, Lord, that you bless it to our bodies. We have had the spiritual food. We are about to take up, partake of the spiritual food. Let it be of benefit to our body, we pray. Thank you, Lord, for everything. Dismiss us now from this session with your blessings. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right, everybody, we have one hour for lunch. We return here at 3, 3 for the second session. God bless you all. Check one, two. All right, everyone, just want to remind you that there is soup on the outside, the Alpine Mennonite Women's Fellowship.